Hamza Yousaf deposit return scheme could be at risk. I've long joked that the more taxes the government imposes on me, the more control the tyrants that run the world exert over me, the more I'm going to set couches on fire, purposely piss the bed every Saturday night so I can ditch a mattress in the sea every three months and empty bottle banks into the sea purely out of spite. But this story led me down a rabbit hole that really did blow my mind and I want to share it with you. Also, this is probably the only instance you'll ever find where Humza Yusuf is all for returning things to their point of origin. It's a shame he never says the same thing about sex traffickers from Lagos, isn't it? Right then, so the story is quite a simple one. The First Minister has told the BBC he's struggling to see how Scotland's deposit return scheme can go ahead without the UK government's support. Yeah, because as usual, the Scottish government is about as good with money as a pissed sailor in Las Vegas. And if the English aren't paying for it, the Scottish can't afford it. They all love to teach an alternative history up in Scotland, but Rabbi Burns wrote about it. Bought and sold for English gold. The reason you're in the Union is because you lads spend like posh spice in Harrods with David Beckham's credit card. We didn't invade in 1960 and conquer the country at the point of a gun. It's not what happened. So read a few books before you start whinging, please. Back to the story at hand. He set Monday as a deadline for a response and said it was effectively an ultimatum. The UK government said the deposit return scheme should be consistent UK wide. It is looking increasingly likely that the deposit return scheme will be scrapped. The Scottish government wants the scheme to cover glass bottles, plastic bottles and drinks cans. It's, it sounds like a dull story, but the good bit's coming up. What would you say if I was to tell you that recycling your plastic is far worse for the environment than burying it in a big hole? Would you call me mad? Well, prepare to have your mind blown then. I've got a short video to show you from the libertarian, not right-wing, not conservative, not a political ideologue, television presenter, John Stossel. Let's watch it together. I'll provide some amusing commentary and prepare to have your mind blown because this is the actual fact about recycling. But I can sum it up in one sentence if you're unwilling to watch it, all right? Getting a dirty milk carton and throwing it in a big hall means that in a hundred years time, they'll probably build on top of that hall and nobody will even notice it. But if you take the time to wash it, have it collected by a big heavy wagon, drove quite far to another location to be processed, stuck on a container ship, sent all the way to India, and then ditched in the sea for a dolphin to choke on. If you think that is better for the environment than simply buried it in a hole in the ground, I don't know what to tell you. I support burying things. You support jamming six terrapins heads in one of those little plastic things that goes around the top of a six pack of cans. You want to get six terrapins in a chokehold, you horrible, horrible bastard. Do you recycle? For sure, absolutely. Absolutely, everything I possibly can. For decades, we've been told. Recycle America, don't just throw it all away. Because recycling will save the planet. You're saving the earth. And that's what people believe. We have to do it for the kids, for the next generation. This will all be back on the shelf as a cracker or cereal box in about four to five weeks. This recycling company is run by Lynn Hoffman. If we're not using recycled paper and cardboard, we're cutting down more trees. Recycling paper and cardboard does save trees. Recycling aluminum does save energy. But most of the other stuff is impractical to recycle. That's right. This is material that came in to the recycling facility from people's recycling carts and is going to leave as trash. Huge amounts of what people send to her recycling plant will never be recycled. The worst is plastic, which for years has been marked with the recycling symbol. We see stuff like this all the time. Recycling arrows on it. Please recycle. It's not recyclable. Even worse, plastic bags clog the recycling machines. You have to climb in for a couple hours every day and cut them out with the box cutter. But people think most of our plastic is recycled. Yeah, I do think so. Is it not? You're going to tell me it's not? <laughs> that's, what, that's the trick? The reality is that... The amount of plastic actually recycled is around 5%. Wow. 5%. 5%. Are you better off throwing it in a big hall and forgetting about it? Or giving Flipper a big surprise when he thinks he's going to eat a nice tasty fish and instead he's choking on a... 
and instead he's choking on a milk bottle full of Johnny's. They didn't know. It's sad. All my life, I've heard about how important it is to recycle. It's not. Science writer John Tierney debunked recycling claims years ago. His New York Times Magazine story, Recycling is Garbage, set a record for Times hate mail. And yet, what you said is still true? It's even more true today. In fact, the economics have just gotten worse. Now... So he wrote a New York Times piece in 1996 that set a record for hate mail because even back then, eco-activists and delusional, woke, commie ideologues could not see sense, even when you lay it out for them in black and white. Data. Factual data. This is how much we collect. This is how much ends up in the sea. And they all lost their minds about it. And he's telling you it's even more true now than it was then. You think you're helping the world. You're not. You're just putting 50 fat bin men to work, driving around all day, using diesel all day, picking up shite all day, driving it for miles, processing it for hours, shipping it for days across the world, and then they throw it in the sea. <laughs> Which do you think causes the most carbon emissions? Answers on a postcard. How my city would save more than $300 million a year if it just stopped recycling. Recycling is an industry that's using increasingly expensive labor to produce materials that are worth less and less. Because it's not worth recycling here, much is shipped overseas to countries like Malaysia, where it's just piled up. A vast field of plastic, two stories high. Some of it from America. Let's see if we can look on the back here. Marysville, Ohio. Look, Walmart bag. They just dump here and then they burn it. That pollutes even more. <laughs> or they set it on fire. Process, 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 drive, 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 sale, 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 set it all on fire. Oh yeah, that's good for the world, lads. What would you rather carry your toddler past? Two tons of buried plastic bottles or two tons of smoldering, towering conflagration? <laughs> Just think of it in common sense terms. Which is going to be more bad for the old lungs? Burying it or sailing it 2,000 miles and then setting it all on fire? It's a tough one. And what they don't burn, they sometimes dump in the ocean. One garbage truck of plastic is dumped in the sea every minute. Barely any of that plastic comes from American shores. So... <laughs> If you care about saving Flipper, you should put your plastic bottle in the garbage. The garbage? But then it would go to a landfill. And aren't we running out of space for landfills? I'm sure we are. People believe that because for years the media said, We've about run out of places to throw away our throwaways. They think that because years ago there was so much publicity about this barge. A symbol of this country's growing problems with trash. The barge traveled thousands of miles looking for a place to dump its load. But it wasn't because there wasn't room. States turned this barge away because alarmist media scared people about what it contained. There could be infectious waste. Dripping brown ooze of possibly infectious material. We don't know what kind of tropical vermin is in that garbage. The EPA later found it was normal garbage. And landfills had plenty of room for it. Today, they have more space than we'll ever need. If you think of the United States as a football field, all the garbage that we will generate in the next 1,000 years would fit inside a tiny fraction of the one-inch line. Really? Really. Really. And again, I'm a socially liberal centrist chap. I've got no axe to grind against the Green Lobby, but I demand logic in all things, and everything we've done in the last 30 years with regards to the Green issues we have done arse backwards, upside down and back to front. If we threw everything in landfill, it wouldn't even take up 0.5% of the available space in the USA. And it's probably about the same in the UK. My first job when I left the car was driving a recycling truck for York City Council. And I very rarely got up where the bin lads used to ditch the refuse. But I did it a couple of times when people were off or on strike. Obviously, I didn't go on strike. They've used the same landfill site for about a decade because... They have a lot of sensible regulations for landfill. They use technology to crush everything up dead, dead small. And then they bury it systematically over 100 acres or what have you. And it lasts for decades. So you simply get the shite, ditch it in the hole, drive off. Instead of putting myriad different links in the chain 
tons of labour, tons of effort, tons of diesel, tons of fuel, tons of driving, tons of sailing to either set it all on fire or tip it in the sea. <laughs> so I've shot my bolt. If you're not on board by now, I don't know what else to tell you other than to say that you're irrational, you're delusional and you're wrong. So I'm all behind sensible efforts to make the world cleaner. But just because something sounds nice doesn't mean it's a good idea. So Extinction Rebellion, Just Stop Oil, and all the other Tarquins stopping people getting to work and being a right royal pain in the arse can get their gums around my plums. I don't support you. I never will because I have got a fully functioning brain and you haven't. Feels before reels should be the mantra of the woke generation. You're wrecking the world and I'm not. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. All right, I will leave a link to the full thing if you want to watch another few minutes there, but it is damning, it is evidence-led, and it is perfectly logical. I have a smaller carbon footprint than 99% of the woke activists. Thank you very much. I eat clean, I walk everywhere, and the tiny amount of waste I do generate gets slung in a hole. <gasps> you're welcome, lads. Anyway, let me know what you think. If you're labouring under the delusion that you're helping, trust me, you aren't. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you all for a live stream on Monday. Cheers.